Hi Derek, been a fan of yours for a long time. I actually started my YouTube channel because of the video you posted about gyroscopic precession. I thought I could explain it better than you. I couldn't, it was embarrassing and a bad video. I should probably learn from my mistakes, but here we are again. A few weeks ago you posted a video about a special car and for once I think I can explain it better than you. I probably can't. I'll probably embarrass myself again. And for that, I just want to tell you... F*** you! This video was brought to you by Blinkist. A few weeks ago, Derek posted a video about a car that can go faster than the wind while being pushed by nothing else than the wind. Now, this seems impossible to me. And if it doesn't seem impossible to you, allow me to illustrate the problem with a very shitty analogy. Imagine you have a glass. And now, imagine that glass is filled with water. Now, if I push the glass, it turns into wine. But if I keep on pushing it, it gains speed. The speed that is exactly the same as my finger. Why? Well, it's my finger that is pushing it. If my finger stops pushing it, the cup stops. Then, how can it be that the car can go faster than the wind, since the wind is like my finger and is pushing it? Well, that's not exactly the case, because in the case of the car, it's not really a force but momentum. What is momentum? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is not bad wine, actually. Now, I want to explain momentum in the most intuitive way possible. And what better way to explain momentum than guns? Hello, in Tegza. My name is Vlad. I am a Russian tomato gangster and also Natalia's lover. You killed my one true love, and by mafia laws, now that means I have to kill you in a horrible and painful way. Wait, 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 wait. Is that a gun? Anyway, moving on. Momentum relates the mass and velocity of an object, and just like energy, momentum is always conserved. Which means that if a small object at high speed collides with a big object standing still, the small object will transfer momentum to the big one and make it move at a slower speed, since the big one is more massive. Yep, that's where the word comes from. It means it has a lot of mass. It's also a very scientific way of calling someone fat. To demonstrate how this effect is applied on a sail, I 3D printed a car with a metal sail and shot it with plastic bullets. We only do punk rock science here. Okay, airsoft sail car, test one. Have you clicked it, Katrina? Yes. As you can see, as the bullets hit the sail, they lose speed and transfer momentum to the car. Because the car is fatter than the bullets, it moves slowly when compared with the speedy projectiles. With the wind is somehow the same, but instead of plastic bullets, you have micro bullets of air we like to call atoms. Now, you're probably thinking, Intexa, you idiot! It doesn't matter if it's momentum and not a force, because once the car reaches the same speed as the wind, the atoms are no longer colliding with the sail, so it's all the same. And you're right, that's true, I can't refute it. But luckily for us, there's more ways in which the wind can push the car. One of them is drag. In fluid dynamics, drag is a resistance force caused by flow of a fluid around an object. This happens for several reasons, but normally the most significant one is pressure drag. Pressure drag happens when a fluid is forced to change direction because of an object, and because of inertia, cannot contour the entire object. This creates an area with almost no fluid and low pressure, which is a fancy way of saying there's a vacuum and that sucks. In most cases drag is a bad thing, but because the sail car is moving in the same direction as the wind, drag is actually helping. Okay, I know what you're about to tell me. In Texas, there is no drag once the car reaches the same speed as the wind because there's no relative motion between the two. Yeah, drag is also not the magic force that accelerates the car past wind speed. Which makes me wonder, is it even possible? Well, apparently, it's not only possible, but very common. Sailboats do it all the time, and the way they do it is by using the dark arts of trigonometry. If you have the wind hitting an angled sail in this direction, by the time the wind traveled this much, the boat traveled this much. Steve Mould made a brilliant video explaining this, you should probably check it out. So angled sails do the trick, but only if you're not going in the same direction as the wind. And in this case, that's kind of the point. 
To find success, you need to trick the wind into thinking you're not going in the same direction as itself. And to do that, you need a propeller. The car built by Rick Cavallaro sails faster than the wind because it uses a propeller as a rotating sail. I didn't really understand how the propeller was helping the car go faster than the wind. And I think the primary reason for that is that I didn't really understand how propellers work. Rotating propellers are commonly used to push aircrafts forward. They do this using two different ways. The first one is by pushing air backwards, like you would push water while rowing in a canoe. For every action, there's a reaction. If you push air backwards, as a result, you also push yourself forward. The second way requires a more efficient shape for the blade, an airfoil. Propellers are basically rotating airplane wings, and airplane wings use a special shape called airfoil, which is a shape used to promote lift. This shape does this because it has a longer length in the upside and a shorter length in the downside. This forces the wind to flow faster over the wing, and faster flow has lower pressure, which means the wing is getting sucked up. At this point in time I needed more than abstract thinking to really understand this, so I decided to 3D print my own car. Sponsor time. 3D modeling is boring. It's not always boring, of course, but most of the time, it's boring. I mean, nobody likes to 3D model screws. To fill the void of interest, I like to listen to podcasts and audiobooks, and the tool that I use for that is Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that you can install on your phone to listen to podcasts and audiobooks. They are condensed into blinks, so you can enjoy the essential information of the book in the limited amount of time that you have. Right now I'm listening to The 12 Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. It's much more than a motivational book and I highly respect Professor Peterson. I personally recommend you this book to read. If you want to follow my advice, the first 100 people to use the link www.blinkies.com will get one week of unlimited access to the app and also 25% discount if you go for the full membership. Don't waste time. Use this valuable tool to entertain yourself and learn while you work. Back to the video. So in a simple way, these are the mechanics of how the car should work. The wind hits the car from behind, what pushes the car forward. This makes the wheels rotate. And because the wheels are geared to the propeller, in a way that makes the propeller push air backwards, the propeller acts as a rotating sail that accelerates the car further. In theory, let's see if that's actually true. To test the car, I used a treadmill. My first concern was to see if the propeller could actually generate enough thrust to beat the friction from the ground. Okay, this is the first test with uh, the car, let's see if it can do it. Katrina, hit it! So if I let go, it goes away. Okay, I think we need to go faster, Katrina. Is it 5 km per hour? Yes. Let's try again. Nope, still going backwards. So let's go max speed, 8 kilometers per hour. Then. Not working. Why is it not working? Come on, little guy. Okay, so the propeller is not generating thrust enough for the car to go faster than the treadmill. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try with some wind behind the car to see if it helps. Let's try that. Yeah. You wanna move? Oh. Yeah, it's just not enough. This propeller is not, it's not efficient. I think it's because it's too thin. So the propeller was neither working as a sail or a propeller. And that has to do with poor design on my part. Apparently, the pitch of the blade is very important. So to make my life easier, I 3D printed a propeller in which I can adjust the pitch manually. And 
Now I have the new propeller in which I can adjust the pitch. Let's try to do that. I think it's working better. It takes longer, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the speed. Can you increase the speed? I think it's a good idea to test it with the wind. Okay. You wanna go? Whoa, wait. That's some reaction. Okay. That's good. Okay, so let's do a, a higher speed. Oh yeah, I can feel it. Look. Yep. Okay, Katrina, give me some speed. Low, low setting speed. Oh boy! Okay, give me more speed. Let's go! Okay, stop there. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, he wants to go forward, that's for sure. Look! <laughs> that's amazing! So this time the propeller worked well as a sail, but that's only because I used a very fine pitch, what turns the propeller into a blunt object that the wind can smash into. If I wanted to go faster than the wind, I actually needed to work as a propeller and generate some thrust. For my next propeller I designed a fixed pitch propeller using the angles that worked better for the adjustable one, and instead of 3D printing the prop in resin, that is too heavy, I used this special filament that has the density of foam and is really light. This propeller worked pretty well and even with almost no wind and the treadmill at full power would accelerate very well. In this point of the video I want to share with you my understanding of how the propeller sail car can go faster than the wind. In the beginning the car is standing still and gets hit by the wind. At this stage the prop works like a sail and uses the wind to push the car forward. It's very important to mention that the reason why the propeller works so well as a sail is because it's rotating in the opposite way the wind wants to turn it. Because of that the relative speed at which the air hits the blades is very high. Think of it in this way. If Clara throws a tomato at my face while I'm standing still, the speed at which the tomato collides with me is exactly the speed at which the tomato was traveling. But if Clara throws a tomato at me while I'm running in the opposite direction the tomato is traveling, the impact is much greater because you have to add up the tomato speed and my speed. Relative speed. The sail effect can only take the car to the speed of the wind but it's very important for me to say that the wind will keep the car going at the same speed as long as there's no ridiculous amount of friction. This is important because as long as the sail effect keeps the car at the same speed as the wind, the propeller effect takes care of the rest. Let's talk about rotation. Like I said, the wheels of the car are geared to the propeller, which means that for each rotation the wheels complete, the propeller completes one as well. This is not true for the big car on Derek's video because the prop on that car only completes half a rotation for each wheel rotation, but as you will see in a moment, this is not really relevant. Even though they both complete a rotation, because the prop has a bigger diameter, the distance traveled by most of the prop is significantly bigger than the one traveled by the wheels, which also means the speed at which the blades of the prop go through the air is much higher even if the car is only traveling forward at the same speed as the wind. This is true even if the propeller only does half a rotation. With the blades going through the air at a high linear speed, lift kicks in and creates a low pressure over the wing. But because in this case the wing is a blade on a prop and over the wing is actually forward, the prop sucks the car forward by creating a low pressure and slowing down the wind ahead. I think this is a coherent explanation of how the car can go faster than the wind, mechanically speaking. But where is the extra energy coming from? Well, it comes from the air of course. Air as any fluid has two types of energy, kinetic energy that comes from its speed and potential energy that in this case comes from pressure. By creating a low pressure ahead, the prop generates a pressure difference that accelerates the car forward. Now, the last important question to be answered is, how is this not free energy? By my logic, 
the car will accelerate forever. No, this is not free energy. Once the car reaches a certain speed, drag will no longer be its friend, and the pressure difference that is generated by the propeller will be cancelled by the air flowing backwards. Now I can imagine that a lot of you are going to disagree with me on this, and that's fine. That's the reason why I created my own design of the car. If you think I'm wrong, print the car, do your own experiments and prove me wrong. Just because some YouTuber like me or Derek says things need to be one way, it doesn't mean you have to believe us. The fun part of science is experimenting and getting to your own conclusions. And if your conclusion is that my explanation is rubbish, well, I'm curious to see what the right answer looks like. So please, share it with me and the rest of the internet. Like I said before, I've been a fan of Derek's videos for a long time. They ignited my passion for engineering and science. And if it wasn't for him, I would probably never started this YouTube channel. So for that, like I said in the beginning of the video, I want to tell you thank you. Wait, why are you blipping me? I'm only saying thank you. Thank you, Derek. But also, because of this video, I almost had a mental breakdown. And for that, Derek, fuck you. Oh, right, the printer giveaway. Um, on my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comments suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Anur K, and he suggested that I could print a UAV rocket. Well, you guys know that here, rockets are always in the menu. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Also, I'm making a Portuguese voice reveal at half a million subs, so don't forget to subscribe. Well, this is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!